Starting now. Hi guys, I am currently on my way to Gerald Undone Studio to ask him a very important question. Stay tuned where I will post his full address and phone number. But first things first, we have to stop at Canada's finest dining establishment. Where the door handles are literally hockey sticks. That doesn't really help the stereotype. Pop lights are like, I don't know, 4,000, but then the studio is to 5,500. Okay. So the white balance is screwy. Well, I, I'm, I'm letting the ZV-E1 do its auto white balance. So let's see if it does good. This is Gerald London. This is uh, it's the studio tour. Are we rolling? This is what we're doing. Oh yeah, we're rolling. <laughs> we don't we don't stop rolling. And here's some stuff. Oh, we're not gonna show it. But it's secret. Do you see this purple star switch? So I'll do the full the full thing. So I'm about to flick it on. Look over my shoulder. We got the whole studio on a single switch. Oh, pretty good, right? Yeah, Gerald and done making everybody jealous. We, uh, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be some logistical movements here because. Eventually, this whole setup's gonna go on the other side, so it is narrow in the interim. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I, I'm gonna walk back. As I want, I'm always curious as to how it is you enter like your space. So you walk in, yeah. and then we have we got an editing station over yeah. here. Then we got some sound blankets, another editing station right here. It's custom build, of course, Gerald London. Yeah. Got some purple cables. I've heard of those. <laughs> and then we walk in here. And we have a set while I knock down all of the cameras. That's right. Ooh, and look at the size of this softbox. So that's what's gonna move eventually, because uh, it's so deep. So I want to try and I'm gonna replace it with a fixture that's thinner, and then the that second station can go back in the corner there, which would hopefully create more walking path. And here we have see seats. This is the key. A lot of people think I stand in my videos, but you get chairs with low backs. There you go. So people think you're standing, That's the play. but you're not. And then this this is different than the original. I remember the original Gerald had uh, like tools. There's tools, yeah. Tools, and now it's a uh, wires. He's promo for his own products. It's a little bit of a rigging a rigging board, I'd say, because there's gaff tape and you know Allen wrenches and clamps and stuff. And of course the obligatory husky. Although pinch. it's purple with a unique color. Look at this. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Spray paint, right? Yeah, we spray painted it. Yeah. And then, but the spray paint was glossy, so then we went after with like a scotch pet. What are they called? Scotch? Scotch spray. Scotch spray, like a, scrubbed it down to like a matte purple. Yeah. Mm, that is nice. Yeah. yeah, you don't get that reflection. Yeah, look at this. And then we have, uh, right here, we have, this This shoots the, the all the lights, the color temperature and all the, I got to get one of those. Things. Spectrometer. Spectrometer, I got to get one. Nobody trusts my light reviews. And a stroboscopic tachometer as well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he made that up. I did, it sounds made up, but that's actually what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> like we're on an episode of Star Trek. That's right. And then, oh, and then as we look around, this is what we see. We see a man ducking behind. <laughs> and <laughs> this, so this is what Gerald looks at. He looks out into the wilderness. Although normally I'll pull that sound blanket over. Yeah. So I just look at sound blankets. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Oh, look at that. Uh, a la Caleb Pike, eh? That's right. It's true, yeah. Yeah, you, so you put it on wheels down there like that. Those uh, wheel C stands you get on Amazon. Okay. And you were, whatever they're called. And then we got an A1 over here. Yeah. This is, this is not just decorative, functional. Are you, that's the camera, te or the lens testing camera. Pull that down and, or if I'm, you know, doing something outside, which isn't very often, but you know mm. how it goes. And you did a studio tour with it. And we did shoot a studio and this, tour with And these it. are the bananas, the famous, right. famous bananas. Don't ever tell anybody if they're fake or real, though. No, no, these are, know. I just had one. They're delicious. <laughs> and this I replace is them every day. Still the aperture. You're still rocking the aperture from yeah, the first. You know what's funny, though? What's that? I, so I, I gave away or sold or something for at a, reason, at a heavy discount, the 300D and 300X that were in there. Mm -hmm. But I still wanted to put the prop bags so that I got Aperture to send me just like random empty ones that they had sitting around the, the <laughs> warehouse. So these don't belong to any lights. They're literally just, you know. All right, well, if I had my clipboard, I would grade this, you know, like. Uh, As a perfect score, probably. Well, I just, I would undermine. So I had 95 out of 100 next to my. Have you I seen get, this though? So wait. all the camera rigs, like the ones that are in use, this is a spare one, have this like tether that comes off of them. That's USB-C and HDMI. And they run, the other two are cable managed, so you don't trip on them, but they run to the back of this thing here, into a capture card in the back of the computer, and the USBs run to a power bank down there, and so they're constantly power and data connected to sort of like the, the main hub. They, they record locally, but then they also go onto the computer and also are powered. So they have basically three power redundancies, because they have a V-mount, a battery internally, and they're connected to a plate, 
and the data is recorded locally and also goes to OBS over here. Okay, well, all right, your score has gone up to 96. <laughs> I was looking at the monitor. I got to look at the That's lens. Right. This is nice. You got a big old monitor here. I probably already showed that. It and wasn't wasn't running in your vlog. You have to vlog the vlog of the. Where's your little camera? It's down here. Let's make it a weird meta experience. Oh yeah, right. I can do that. That's what I'll do. Have you seen this? That's the new. Huh? Fancy. Who makes For, that? That was Yulanzi. Okay. Yeah. Make that. I just did a review of it. It was an amazing review. People say it's the best review ever done. Way better than uh, like a Gerald Undone. That's fair. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, this is what we're looking at yeah. right here. Isn't that cool? It's pretty good. Yeah. And now this is us looking at us. Yeah. And that's YouTube in a nutshell right there. <laughs> YouTube in a nutshell. <laughs> All right. Speaking of YouTube in a nutshell. Okay. Let's say. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> this, this, I am, I'm a master of segues. <laughs> I know, I've got to train myself to look at yeah. this lens. I am going to get a big monitor set up like this, though. This is good. Make sure, it helps you make sure you got, like, no boogers in your nose and, like, you know, you yeah. can check your teeth and stuff. Yeah, he had a lot of stuff in his true. teeth earlier. And so if we are, <laughs> if you're a young person, you yeah. know, if, let's say you're starting out. Like, someone comes to you, they want help. They're like, bro. Yeah. Bro. That's is that usually, how they would say it? That is how okay. my comments usually start with bro. Bro, how can I be like you? Get all of the ladies, you know, right. doing the tech reviews. Get that Riz. Get that Riz. But Yo, I, flick me up, bro. Right? <laughs> he's clearly younger than me. I don't know half of those words. So we got uh, uh, cheap. We want cheap. These people, they're, they're, they want a budget because they don't know how far they're going to get into this yet. Okay. But they still want amazing quality. What is the best quality that you can think of for a very good budget? Let's say a budget of 2500 bucks total. Okay. Cause yeah, if you if you were less than that, I would say I would say phone. Phone. Yeah, yeah. phone. Buy lights. Buy sound. Um, if you got some money though, uh, hmm, I do like. It might be a little bit out of budget, I, but the, the camera that I'm using now, which is the, the Sony Alpha Seven IV, mm. for YouTube Studio, at that price, I wouldn't go any higher. Right. Yeah, even I'm using it, like not, whatever that means. I mean, but by that, I just mean like I have infinite access to cameras, yes. and this is what I'm choosing to use. Yeah. And it's not. I think it's like two thousand or something, yeah. twenty two hundred bucks. But if we want to make it a little bit less expensive, the, I mean, I think you'd probably have to. The Lumix cameras are a little bit less. You can get like a an S five two for maybe a little bit less, and, mm -hmm. and that's a similar quality sensor. But I, you could probably go into the APS-C cameras from Sony. So you could get an FX30, which would be, that would be a blanket recommendation if I wasn't sure how they were using it, if they're running around, what the temperature situation would be like, if they needed a fan or whatever. FX30 is more robust. Yep. But if they're in a climate-controlled studio, you can get away with an Alpha 6700 mm -hmm. or whatever that new one's called. The ZV-E10 II. II, Show yes. a little respect, Gerald. <laughs> Put some respect on his name. And now you're starting to get what below a thousand dollars, I think, for that one, right? Yeah, that one is a thousand USD. Uh, if you get the original one, that's that's like seven hundred, but that doesn't have the ten bit color or. Anything. I would not in 2024 recommend any of the first gen of those ones. Mm -hmm. I would say E10 Mark II, A6700 yeah. FX30, one one from that sensor, mm. or if you got a few more bucks, like an A74, and then and then honestly you're done. Yeah, and then you can just use that. For, for the rest of your channel, like, like, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you don't need an FX9. If Gerald's got an A7 IV, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? For for an in, for an inside studio where the camera's not moving, mm. that's that's the maximum quality you need. Yeah. You know? And then, okay, but now we need a lens. A lens for the A7 IV or a lens for one of the APS-Cs. Uh, okay, I've been a huge fan for Prime of the 3518. That Sony has. Yes, you have. It's yeah. a really good lens for. It would look very similar to this field of view, mm -hmm. and I think that's good for YouTube. If you want to zoom, they have those new compact zooms. The Sony does. Oh, that yeah. Are like um, what do they got? A sixteen to twenty-five and a twenty-five to fifty. So if you like to do more of a vloggy wide end, go with the sixteen to twenty-five. The 16, that one. Yeah. And if you prefer the more, you know, the twenty-five to fifty will get you in that thirty-five zone and give you a little more play. One of those will do the job. You have mm -hmm. to decide. I don't know what content you're trying to make. You know, vlogging. Yeah. I wouldn't do the twenty-five to fifty at all. The sixteen twenty-five would be the answer. Yeah. And if you're going on APS-C side, then, hmm, yeah, sixteen twenty-five could be tight on APS-C. You might want to get that like ten to twenty, or there's some ten to eighteen. Yeah. Third-party lenses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sigma has a. Um, 
10 to 18, and Tamara is 11 to, 11 to 20. But they're yeah. 2.8s. I usually get, for talking head stuff, I'll do like a 24 millimeter full frame. So I'll do like Sigma 16, 1.4. Yeah. You know? That is really good for, yeah, for a fixed lens. The yeah. Sigma 16, 1.4, which has been out for a while. Yes. I, when I was in GH5 days, mm -hmm. I had a 16 on there. And so it was a 32 mil yeah. uh, equivalent. Um, and that lens is great. Yeah, yeah. Very I fast had, for APS-C. That's yeah. what I had for the GH5 as well. Yeah. I, when I started watching your channel, the reason I started watching this because I was like, hey, that guy's using a GH5, just like me. Just like me. Just like me. And now here we are. There we are. Oh my God, Gerald is so happy <laughs> to meet me here. <laughs> it's all come full circle. So, okay, so, and then uh, let's say microphone. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's a good sort of all around mic. The Rode Video Mic NTG. Yeah. Because you could throw it on the camera if you're doing like a little vlog setup. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to do an in studio thing, you could boom it. Yeah. You know, it's not the best indoor dialogue boom mic, but it can certainly get the job done. One of the studio tours around recently, uh, Blacktail Studio, was using it as his voiceover mic. No way. So, like, you, it's yeah. versatile. Yeah, because you can USB that right into your computer. You can. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You, could, you could set up a live stream, video call, whatever. Yeah. Then you can stick it in the shoe of your camera, run it. So, I think if you got one mic and you're trying to make it work in a lot of ways. I think the video mic and TG is a is a great choice. I don't know if they have a sequel to that yet, mm -hmm. but get that then if they do. I don't know, but I'm just thinking of the original. Yeah. Yeah. No, they still uh, that's the that's the one they have still. And uh, and then lights. I'm assuming you're big fans of the Amaran lights, right? Yeah. Hundred D is about two hundred bucks. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good so value. you could just do like, would you do two lights? You know, one fill, one. Yeah, one key? I think I think. Lighting is going to make the biggest difference once we hit some minimum threshold of camera, yeah. which could al almost honestly be your phone, yeah. you know, then then lighting is going to make the biggest difference. So I would probably put more money into lights. Mm. I would get maybe a panel, like a cheaper panel. I would get a COB like, like the 100D or something. Right. And I might even get a couple, you know, Amazon specials for either lighting up the background yes. or getting separation from the background or something. Like in here, obviously, it's a bit of a different story. I have, I have quite a few lights, but mm -hmm. imagine this light was replaced by a cheaper fixture. That right. would do all this. Yeah. And then we have a light that kind of cuts across us. You can see it on the side of your uh, your forehead here and stuff like that. So it's coming from up here. That gives us more separation from the background because it might be hard to tell in the shot, but we're I'm like, we're actually like right here. Like not even, you know what I mean? But when we're sitting here, it kind of looks like it's like a couple I, meters behind, yeah, right? So, I couldn't reach it as easy as Gerald because my arms aren't as long. <laughs> but it's okay. I'll sit straight. So that, I would put money into that. I would put money into like, you know, lighting the talent from the back, lighting the talent from the front. Yes. If you need, I'm using a, a sound blanket for Phil, the white side of it. Oh, so yeah. I don't even have a second. Well, I, I'm bouncing it. But like that creates a bit of, you know, so at least those two lights and then maybe something to, to Got to light the background. Up the background. Yeah, on. I think that's the uh, people miss the most. They're often asking me on the channel about the cameras, and the, it's like, but if you light it up well, you could get that ZV-E10 too, and it would look fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if you don't light it up well, then you'll be thinking, doesn't, oh, I need that full frame camera. Yeah. Like, but it's not. It's the lights. So yeah, so you get a um, softbox with, uh, say, an Amaran 100D, uh, and then light up your background with a couple of panel lights. You could you could get those RGB ones that uh, yeah. you know give a little splash of color. You know, something like that. And then tubes are really versatile yeah. if you, I, I don't know what the market is for tubes these days. I'm sure they're all over the place in terms of price from really cheap to really expensive. That's right. Uh, but tube, like a lot of the stuff in the background now is tubes. I got a tube on each side that's shining that white light in. We got tubes up here. Oh, yeah. I've got a tube, a tube in the, in the ceiling, ceiling that's sort of shining down and everything. Mm. So tubes are good for sort of casting a wide, you know, a panel's good too. If you have space between you and the background, mm -hmm. you could put a couple panels in the ceiling and just kind of like, flood your whole your whole background with them or even on the ground on a little tripod and kick it up you yeah know? so you heard it here so this is what Jared would do if he was just starting out again he would go through my affiliate links and buy a <laughs> zv e10 mark ii or even better camera i don't I mean you could spend more if you wanted through my affiliate links that is completely up to you is that, was, what, is that what this was all about yeah okay. yeah it's just also do they say z in newfoundland uh no we say you know what? We do say Z, but we're supposed to say Z, but Newfoundlanders, we don't care. <laughs> don't follow the rules. We don't follow the rules. <laughs> we're rule breakers. This, no. is, this is a Z house around here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so respect Don't it. I know it. <laughs> don't I know it. His toddler came up to me. It's Z. <laughs> so, well, thanks, Gerald, for being on my show. All right. But we're in my... That's, in, that's a confusing one. Yeah, it's my show. Shouldn't you be thanking me? In I don't. your studio. 
and uh, not quite as good as my studio, right. but it'll do. You know what okay. I mean? Well, I'm glad it all worked out for you then. Yeah. So, all right. Are we done? I'm done. I guess I am too then. I did the outro. Okay. <laughs> I was just in your studio. I didn't touch anything. It's okay. <laughs> you are.